Hello, Georgina here, and welcome to the third day of 31 Days of Tarot 2022. Each January, Ethany hosts a full month of daily video prompts for tarot and oracle readers. Search YouTube for hashtag 31 Days of Tarot, and you will see videos from the huge community of cartomancers. Day three prompt is what are your top oracle decks of 2021? And just like tarot, there were many lovely oracle decks published last year, but here are two favorites that I backed on Kickstarter. First one here is The Crystal Forests, an intuitive card deck by Jess Purser, and information about this and all of the things I'll show you will be down in the video description. Let me just move this so you can see these cards. I won't show you all of them, but they are all based on trees and gemstones and very lightly, almost, you know, so you don't have to have it right there in front of you if you don't want to. Uh, it explains what the gemstone is and a keyword. And I'm just going to go through just a few of these. These are so nice. Uh, one of these, I forget which one, is actually my wallpaper on my phone. I liked it that much. Just gorgeous. This is what I mean by people who can actually draw and paint, I have such love and respect for. Okay, and the other deck is the Prairie Majesty Oracle. And I should say that 2021 is also the year that I learned how to crochet custom-sized bags for things. So this, this is my handiwork. I can't draw, I can't paint, but I can crochet and knit like nobody's business. And uh, if you're interested, uh, make a comment down below if you want me to show you how to make one of these. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is the Prairie Majesty Oracle by Kara Simmons and Amy Koenig. And let's see if I can just carefully get the guidebook out here. People always want to see the guidebooks. Guidebooks are boring. The real power is in the cards there to look at. But they very thoughtfully made a companion Book. Nice full color book, I might add. I always appreciate that. And check out the edging on these cards. I don't know if I can catch this in the light, but this is like a purple rose gold color. It's, it's really pretty. I'm just going to go through a few of the cards. Here we go. What kind of release would protect clarity in my space? Striped skunk. <laughs> Sorry. This is what I mean. Like I appreciate decks that have a little bit of a sense of humor. And I'm partial to animal oracles, so this just ticked all the right boxes for me. And really good card stock. I know, I know, you're going to hear this again and again and again. I, I really, really like and appreciate good card stock. <laughs> if I'm going to shuffle and use something again and again, it better have good card stock. And beyond these two decks, 2021 was also the year that I rekindled my passion for reading Mahjong cards. There are 144 cards in a Mahjong Oracle, but most of them are duplicated. So there's only 42 unique meanings to learn. And that means it's a little more than Lenormand, but hey, far fewer than Tarot. If you are interested in me doing a series on how to read Mahjong cards, 
leave a comment because I would more than happily do one. <laughs> this is the Fortune Teller's Mahjong Oracle by Derek Walters. And he has been doing books about this, wow, since back in the 1980s. Uh, this is a deck that they did, uh, I believe this edition's from 1994, and it comes with this really cool guidebook. Most of the text in this, uh, it's kind of a reduced version of a much longer work he did back in the 80s, which of course I also own. It's a good book. I recommend it. I think this may be out of print or pretty hard to find, but it's worth tracking down. Of course, if I teach a series on Mahjong, I will show you how to make your own deck because I'm clever like that and incredibly cheap. So uh, you want to know why I deeply appreciate artists and people who can draw? It's because back in the early 90s, I attempted to make my own set of Mahjong cards. And um, well, I'll just uh, share these with you. Um, hey, I was in my t early 20s and, and I know nothing about how to draw. So this is the Peacock card from Derek Waters. And that's just me with, you know, my attempt at it. Just, okay, I, I can make a stick, right? <laughs> Here's the toad. And um, I knew I couldn't draw a toad, so I just put like a toad hiding behind something. Hey, you work around your limitations. <laughs> Here is Lotus. and water. It's like I can do calligraphy, so little designs like this I don't have a problem with, but um, yeah, I knew I couldn't draw a turtle. I just knew I couldn't draw a tortoise, so yep. <laughs> I, I cannot draw. <laughs> Here's mushrooms. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, here's one I was pretty proud of. Th this is Willow. <laughs> See, that, that actually looks like something. Pearl I made as the yin-yang symbol. Pine. I guess I'm okay when it comes to trees. I could do Willow and I could do Pine. Here's Phoenix. Here's Jade. And Peach. And for some reason, my peaches are very pointy. I made pointy peaches. I was 25, give me a break. <laughs> um, here's Tiger. I was really proud of my Tiger. Here's Unicorn. And unicorn, um, the Chinese unicorn is not like the unicorn in Western mythology. It's a very different creature. And then here is commence or go or begin. Here is center. And here is white. There are many, many, many other cards but like I said, um, if you're interested in learning Mahjong, how to read it for fortune telling, uh, put a comment down below. Uh, I am considering doing it, if there's enough interest. It's not an easy system. Um, it's kind of complex, but you know me, I'll break it all down and make it real super simple. And that ends today. See you tomorrow for day four.